Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to do a project video, and I don't do many of these because they don't get the number of views that my equipment and machinery uh, videos do. But this is a kind of a cool thing that I like. It's a, a hinged box that uses barrel hinges. And I'll get you a close-up here. If it doesn't come out, I'll take some pictures and, and insert it into the video. But you can see the hinges in the back. And on the inside, and it's uh, this is all one piece. Yeah, I sell it for fifty dollars. Uh, so this inside is done on a bandsaw. So it's a combination bandsaw box and regular box. Uh, that's my, this one's out of cherry and walnut. So, first thing you have to do is grab yourself a piece of wood. It's not real critical what size it is. This particular piece is a glue up of maple and cherry. This is three and an eighth this way, eight and a half long, two inches wide. And then, uh, make sure you can see it, maybe like that would be better. I've marked where I'm going to cut it out on the bandsaw. So it's about three quarters inch in from each side and a half inch on the bottom. So when this piece is cut out, that's the inside of the box, then I'll put some wood on the back and the front and then the top. And that creates the box. First thing I'm going to do is on the bandsaw, cut out the center of the box. All right, so here's what we have. I'm gonna sand it lightly on the inside, but it's gonna be flocked. Uh, you can look up flocking.com if you're not familiar with the flocking process where you put a colored adhesive and then the acrylic uh, flakes that, that stick to the adhesive. So mostly I'm just going to kind of even it out, make sure that curve kind of matches that curve. And then I'll be ready to, to glue on the front and back. I found this half inch piece of walnut, it's kind of nice, and uh, I'm just going to split it down the middle and that'll be my front and back. So that'll be the front and back, I'm not concerned about it being too high. After I glue it on, I'll make sure the bottom's flush, and then I'll trim off on the table saw the tops and make the whole top flush. So I'm going to cut these down and glue them up. I've got the base of the box all squared up. So I've got the walnut on the side, I've got the cherry and the maple. It's looking pretty good. Next I need a top, and the top needs to be half inch. And I've got a piece of Liptus. If you've never heard of Liptus, it's a man-made variation of eucalyptus. And it's only grown in a, one specific farm in Brazil, because they have a patent on this. And they have a trademark on the name Liptus. I got it from a local furniture maker. So I've got this piece and I need to make a half inch thick piece out of this. And so that's what I'm gonna do. So I, I did some resign. I usually resaw either, of course, on the bandsaw or the table saw. If the piece is long and I can run it through my planer, I'll usually use the bandsaw. For something short like this, I'll resaw it on the table saw. And there's lots of videos on how to do that if you're not familiar with that technique. So I've got about a half inch thick piece of Liptus. It's a beautiful pinkish wood. It's really hard to know if you can 
how well you can see that. But it's cut to length, and I decided to make it the same length as the box. Sometimes I let it hang over. It all depends what I feel like. But I, I left it a little long in the front, so this is not my finished edge. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. Either I'm going to cut it flush and maybe do a cove cut on the uh, router and make a little cove in there so it gives you a little handle to lift up. Or I can cut a, a miter on it or something. I don't know yet, but I, I won't decide that till after I get the hinges fit. And that, that's the next, and I think the hardest part of the whole project is making those hinges fit the right way. These are the barrel hinges. These are five by 19 millimeters. And I do have a five millimeter drill bit, but also I think 13 64ths work. A while ago I made this block that shows the positions of the barrel hinges relative to this face. This would be the back of the box. The barrel hinges would go in like this. And I've got this dimension from the back to the center line of the barrel hinge worked out. It's about 3 sixteenths. Well, yeah, about 3 sixteenths. And, and I've got this square set to that. So the thing to do now, I've got this one set to an inch. And I'm going to come in. This is going to be the back of my box. This will be the front. The cherry is going to be in the back. So I'm going to come in an inch and mark it. And come in an inch. And then I'm going to mark the center line of the hole like that. Mark that a little bit more. And that's where my holes go on there. And then I do the same thing on here. I'll make their the identical marks. And because this is exactly the same width, I can go in the same distance and it'll be perfect. And these need to be pretty precise. So I've set my fence. So when I bring my drill bit down, I'm in the right spot. And that'll ensure, and I'll do the same thing here, I'll put it against the fence when I drill it, that'll ensure, regardless of my marking, that the hole is the same distance from the back of the box. I've also got, if I turn this on, there's a line, the lower line is my depth that I'm going to go to. I've already set that from a previous project. You want to go to the center of the pin on the barrel hinge. And that's about right. So it goes from not the tip, but the cutting edge on the bottom of the drill bit, of the, uh, the grab point bit, to the center of the pin on the hinge. So let's go ahead and drill these. All right, that looks good. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing with the top. I need to raise it up, of course. Well, not of course, but I do. I'll just check the alignment. Well, you also want to check and make sure you're not going to go through the, the wood. So the depth is right. This is actually a, about a sixteenth of an inch wider than a half inch. Half inch is kind of close because that barrel goes in almost a half inch. So I'm always afraid I'm going to pop the point of the bit through the other side of the wood. So a little thicker is better. Now we can see how they line up. I don't know if it matters, but I like to put them in. They're not exactly symmetrical. There's a part with a, a thin piece, then there's the groove that that goes into. I like to put the grooved part 
in the base of the box. Let's see how this line up. Not bad. Now, of course, you, you, you can't really test the hinge mo motion because the hinges move and they're not epoxied in. And also, you need the chamfer the back to make room for the box to open. Okay, so now you can see that the hinge actually falls all the way down. And that the box top actually opens and closes. It's got a little tiny gap there. The gap's a little wider here than it is here, which means one of my holes is deeper on this side. So I have to fix that. But it does open vertically. Not too bad. I didn't record it, but I've cut the cove into the top of the box. And that'll be good. And I'll just sand the edge off, round it off a little bit. Actually, I could tell you, if you look carefully, you'll see that the top really isn't flat on the bottom, or the top of my box isn't flat. It's not a perfect fit. So I have to work on that a little bit too. But the next step after finishing sanding it is to epoxy in the barrel hinges. Okay, I lied. The, ne the next step is actually to finish the box. I'm going to spray silver coat the lacquer, including inside here, because that kind of seals it for the flocking. Uh, I'll actually put tape in the holes to kind of, actually, I, I think I decided I didn't need to do that. I did a test once to see if the epoxy would stick to, if I just sprayed the holes and it sticks fine. So I'm just going to spray the top and bottom. After I spray it with lacquer, then I flock the inside. The last thing I do is epoxy the hinges in. Okay, as you can see, I'll hold that up to the light, the inside is all flocked, and I'm ready to epoxy in the hinges. What I do, I do it in two stages, because I epoxy in the hinges to the base first, to the bottom of the box, and then I put the lid on just to position the hinges, because you can see they could turn, and so you need to make sure they're in the right position. So I put the top on, and then I close it, and let the bottom part cure, and then I do the top part. So first I need to mix up some epoxy. Okay, I've got my epoxy, and I just use, I got these uh, wooden Q-tips, which work great. After this, I need to put on my glasses. Doesn't take much. I just kind of... Stick it in there and line the hole. If anything, I, I want to make sure I get the bottom. But I don't want so much that it pushes out after I put the hinge in. Okay, that should be good. And again, I put the part of the hinge with the U part in the bottom. And I could feel it sticking. I could feel that it's touching the epoxy. So that means my hinges are aligned properly. Close that. Let it sit. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. 
and I'm mixing up some more epoxy. It's firm enough. And now I'm going to turn it upside down, put the lid down like that. The idea is I don't want the epoxy to run out, just in case I have too much in there and it starts to run. Uh, I'd rather have it gravity work for me. Okay, let it sit again. Well, all finished. It's about a uh, half hour later. Epoxy's cured. Nice hinge action. Opens up, um, uh, yeah, almost 90 degrees perfectly. Stands up nice. All that's left is give it a coat of paste wax. Put my stickers on it, and it's ready to sell. I want to thank you very much for watching. If you like my video, uh, Subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.